everyone, and welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, a podcast where our goal is to read the entire Bible in a year, seeking to understand God's plan of redemption while discovering daily and practically your part in it. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are really getting close to wrapping up our journey through Ezekiel. So some of you might be really excited about that. I am really excited about that. I feel like that. we say that every day and then there's like, oh, there's a couple more chapters to go. There is one day left after today. So tomorrow <laughs> we will finish Ezekiel Woo-hoo! and then we will step into Joel for one day and then go into Daniel. And so Ezekiel is like, we're not going to spend much more time with this guy. Aww. And we are continuing through kind of the final... A section of the book that is focused on restoration. We're wrapping up this grandiose vision that Ezekiel is having of the temple. Uh, We've said every single day so far that that is pretty scandalous because there is no temple at this point. It's been destroyed. The city is in ruins. And Ezekiel is the one saying, no, I saw this really wonderful temple that is filled with the presence of the Lord. And the people that he's speaking to have never seen the temple filled with the presence of the Lord. So in chapter 44, uh, it talks about a gate, a gate for the sanctuary on the outer, uh, the outer gate of the sanctuary. And I kind of like to, I don't know, maybe look this up yourself because it's kind of helpful to see. Our Bible gives a really good um, illustration of what this looks like. So in our Bible, uh, there's a, a gate that is shut. So no longer will this outer gate or the prince's gate, I guess, as it's called in our chapters today, it is closed and no longer will be open. It does say that this gate will remain shut. It shall not be opened and no one shall enter by it for the Lord, the God of Israel has entered by it. Uh, Therefore, it shall remain shut. And so this prince that is being talked about is actually really interesting because again and again and again, we see Jesus being brought up over and over and over in the Old Testament where like I knew there were prophecies before. I usually think of Isaiah when I think of prophecies about Jesus, but it is very encouraging and super cool to me to see Jesus being like brought up and referred to over and over again in the Old Testament, specifically in Ezekiel um, in this little section in 44. So in verse three, um, this restoration that we're talking about all the time is how this servant of God, this servant David, Um, who Jesus is in the line of David, Um, he will be that complete restoration for us. And he is like this promised ruler, this promised prince that we are looking at here in chapter 44. And so again, I think that is just a really, really cool reminder and kind of like a full circle picture of how God is going to completely restore his people and offer grace and forgiveness completely for us. There is some stuff in chapter 44 that can confuse you if you're not careful. Uh, There are very strict rules about not allowing a foreigner into the inner court of the temple. And sometimes people pull this out of context and they say, oh, this just proves that God doesn't like foreigners. He only cares about Israelites. But this doesn't mean that foreigners were not allowed to be part of the worship. They just simply were not allowed in the innermost, most holy section of the temple as well as most other people. I was going to say, that was very, very like small percentage of yes. people that can be there anyway. There's a very small amount of people that are allowed to be in there. So don't pull these verses out of context to make God seem like he's racist or xenophobic or something like that. That just plain doesn't make sense. And so there were there's, there's plenty of history of plenty of foreigners who were involved in the worship of the Lord. And if you've been on this journey with us, we've pointed out, several of those instances. Well, not to mention, there are like actual parts of scripture where it talks about people that were foolish and just went in to said places and died because of it. They were not being, or I guess they were not handling these holy places correctly and actually died because of it. So by not establishing those rules, you would actually yeah. send someone it's to their face. It's actually gracious and yeah. compassionate to make sure that they don't do something harmful. Um, Ezekiel 44 has a section about the priests and who's allowed to do the job of the priesthood. Uh, it mentions Zadok, who was actually like a faithful priest in David's time. He did not go into rebellion uh, in David's time. And it feels a lot like Leviticus 22 or 21 and Numbers 18, where God is laying out provisions for these priests and what they're allowed to do and what they should do. So we just are drawn deeper and deeper into this vision 
of ultimate restoration. I mean, the the last priesthood that Ezekiel saw in his previous vision was completely evil, completely wicked. Uh, that was just like the priesthood that actually existed in his day and in his age. They were very wicked. These are the guys that are lowering Jeremiah down into pits and uh, mocking him while he's trying to declare the word of the Lord. So this is obviously a vision because the people that are hearing it have never experienced faithful priests who love the Lord. Actually, it says in verse 23, they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the common and show them how to distinguish between the clean and the unclean. Nobody has cared about that at all up until this point. And Ezekiel is highlighting the fact that things are going to be different. So I don't know if you have anything else for 44, but if we move into 45, we're talking about um, towards the end of the chapter after very specific um, measurements and types of things that need to be taken into consideration for offerings and things like that. Um, the end of chapter 45, it talks about Passover again. So the first time that we've talked about Passover was back in Exodus uh, when the people were were marked with the blood of the lamb over their door so that um, death would pass over them. This time in Ezekiel, this Passover is actually has like a different emphasis to it. So this one specifically emphasizes um, offerings that need to be made for the atonement of their sin. So there's like a different feel for this specific Passover, which is recognized by like the Feast of Passover that they're talking about in this section of text right at the end of 45. So I think that's kind of interesting too. So it kind of has like a different meaning to it um, when they are celebrating their Passover feast together. There's different sacrifices that need to be made, yada, yada. A uh, fun fact across history, um, because Ezekiel's Passover feast is so different, and you can compare this to Exodus 12. Um, it looks like it's referenced as well in Second Chronicles 30. Um, but this passage has been so different to the Passover celebrations in the original five books of the Bible uh, that Ezekiel was actually in danger of being ripped out of the canon at different I was points in say, history. Yeah, that would be really weird. So different rabbis would look at this and be like, "Nah, this is the, we can't have this." So there's been uh, extensive scholarship done to try to reconcile why this Passover is different. Uh, just from a bird's eye view, we are talking about restoration from incredible sin. So right. it makes a lot of sense that this Passover is focused on the forgiveness of sin, but the original Passover was actually focused on God's provision and care <laughs> Mercy, for his people, yeah. um, bringing them out of Egypt. So while the two things are compatible, they're not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And you could imagine why like challenging something like Passover and what it's for, uh, you know, was contentious at times throughout yeah. history. So... Ultimately, I think that is one thing that could point us to the fact that this is kind of a ceremonial, uh, hyperbolic representation of how God is ultimately going to dwell with his people. It may not be a literal thing. And restore his people. I think it all kind of goes together. Like you were saying, that restoration piece is so key because their Passover is now like shifting towards yes. an atonement focus. Yes. They're also referencing Jesus who is to come. Like it's all these light at the end of the tunnels. Like we have to do yep. this because he is coming. He will be here. He's going to make up for our sin. So what would you say is a good your part for today? Um, Man, the your part for today is we only have one more day left in Ezekiel. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God that Ezekiel is almost over. I guess, you know, it, I guess... Maybe this is a stretch. I've been saying that a lot recently, I think. But it is interesting that Ezekiel's Passover is so focused on the forgiveness of sin um, because it reminds us of the gracious, compassionate, merciful nature of God, which yeah. if you've read most of Ezekiel, you you might think that he's not very gracious and he's not very merciful and he's not very compassionate. So there is an end to his grace and mercy. Um, but here, as part of this restoration vision, we see that God is highlighting his forgiveness, the atonement that he offers, the grace that he extends. And so know that God is just, but also know that God is gracious and seek to have a relationship with him by constantly repenting of your sin and enjoying the fact that you don't earn your salvation. Mm -hmm. God graciously gives it to you for free. 
uh, as a free gift from God so that you can enjoy a relationship with him. So walk in that relationship. We will be finishing up Ezekiel tomorrow. We'll see you then. Thanks so much for listening to God's Plan, Your Part. If anything stuck out to you, if you have any questions, or if you'd like to receive a Bible, you can email us at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please consider supporting us through the link in our description. We love that you're on this journey with us, and we hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.